Okay, so we've spoken about Italy, and we're, we're through with our first segment. It's time now for our second segment, which focuses on stuff off the pitch. And off the pitch today, we've got an interview with someone. Now, Marco Anatovic of Austria has been suspended for one game by UEFA for using insulting language towards a fellow player after scoring against North Macedonia in their opening game. Anatovic reportedly racially abused Alioski, who plays for Leeds, by the way. And so our producer, someone whose face you never see, but today you will see. Vaibhav Raghunandan spoke to Nikola Staritz, a football coach who also works on anti-discrimination education about racism in Austrian football. So we're going to jump into that conversation with a start by talking about the Austrian captain, David Alaba. I think now he's, he's well known and he's also perceived as role models and, and, and kids are running around with like Alaba t-shirts and everybody is like seeing, okay, the transfer fair now to Real Madrid and like, it's really interesting for everybody, but it took longer time for him to become a role model in Austria. I mean, he was, he's very successful since, since years, since the last 10 years and more with like Bayern Munich, one of the best teams in the world. And I would say if he, if he would have been like a white guy, he would have become a role model earlier. So like, I would say Alaba had to be very, very, a lot, a lot more successful than at any other whitey would have had to be to, to, to become this person in Austria. This is the one thing. And the other thing is like um, Alaba, um, he, 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 he played with FK Austria Wien until he oh. was 15, I think. And then he, he quite very, very early, he, 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 he was, um, he changed the club and started to play in the Bayern Munich youth. I think he was, was 16. So like, um, even though the league in Austria is not so, not so well, if, if a person is not playing in Austria, then in particular in the youth age, then like, I think many people did not know Alaba in his first years when he played for Bayern Munich because he, he was, he was so, so young when he left Austria and, and, and just a few people followed um, his career in the beginning. So like, I mean, he, after the one to three years, then he started to play in the, in the first team of Bayern Munich. And then like, he became a little bit more famous. But of course, I mean, racism is a, is a big thing. And I would say the fact that he's a black man, um, different. I mean, there's on the other side um, in Austria at the moment, if we talk about like racism and xenophobia, the main thing is like um, um, uh, against people coming from Muslim countries. So, I mean, a good thing for Austrian von Alaba is at least he's a Christian. So, so like this, uh, if he would be, honestly, if he would be like a black guy with like a Muslim background, then the story would have been different again. So like, um, um, but I can remember very well and when it was like seven years ago or so and, and Alaba already was very, very famous. I mean, a black Austrian player and like one very high level Austrian politician, he, he shook his hand and started to talk English to Alaba. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is Austria, yeah? I mean, and then Alaba answered, uh, like in, in this classical Viennese style. Yeah, that's Austrian. what I've heard. I've he's heard Austrian. that he's... Like, he just said, like, um, I'm sorry, you can talk German to me, uh, Austrian to me, I'm from Vienna, so... <laughs> yeah, but I've heard like that a, his uh, German is very Viennese. Like, apparently, yeah. he uses phrases that are very Viennese, and yeah. uh, he talks, like, a lot like yeah. that. And I'd seen this in an interview on like something on Bayern Munich or something around that. Mm -hmm. So he's obviously very connected to home and yes. uh, he has this like very deep connection to Vienna also. Yeah. So, but I think this, this, this small episode, it shows a little bit like, like how the situation is in Austria. I mean, this politician did not want to be mean, but of course, I mean, he could not imagine that there is a black Austrian who's grown there speaks speaks Austrian as he does so like uh, it's really sometimes a little bit middle age is here and, and and you you have it all the time and then of course you have like the the hard and open racism you also have not so much at at, at not so much if you look at the elite clubs because here of course like I mean if you're playing in the first leagues then like you have players from all around the world if you would not be open for that then you would not be successful so like this is like a globalized football market so 
being being racist as a as a top club is just i mean yeah have clubs in austria have been taking the knee or whatever in support of uh, well for improving and uh, to combat racism like english clubs have been doing it for a year mm. now have clubs in austria did they do it at all i mean i have conflicted views about this now but uh, i just want to know if uh, austrian clubs and players have been taking the knee and stuff anything of that sort yeah um taking the knee and an interesting the black lives matter uh, movement and they did not um anticipate it in austria not at all but of course clubs are doing something but but honestly most of it is it is because of our initiative and at least once a year most of the clubs um join it and it's more like campaigning pr like going with you know the transparency on the field like we are against racism or we are against homophobia or or whatever we are like changing the topic sometimes but this is kind of like quite superficial and and also this is something that now is also um 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 the uefa and the fifa they also support this yeah. superficial campaigning so somehow the 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 top clubs they they have to take part in this so it's kind of a little bit an image story so yeah, being yeah, racist absolutely. that's exactly like what i yeah. meant when i said i'm conflicted about yeah. this yeah so like being being racist and not joining these campaigns like is not good for the image of a club so uh-huh. this is the one thing and the other thing is are they really doing you know from their heart inclusion really? yeah are they doing for inclusion it? and 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 also the things that take time i mean having this campaign is so easy but like other things like training their staff or like really education things or like 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 having spaces where the where, where people who are confronted with with discrimination can go to and and so the, the things that take more time and resources and i would say they're not so i mean the, there are some clubs who are more dedicated here it's in one 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 club in graz they 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 really t- take the the anti discrimination message a little bit more serious but others it's like it's just always on a very superficial um level and one example it's very current um in the in the game against north macedonia on yeah. on sunday there was this case of anatovic and 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 um I mean, he he speaks the language, and it was said that he like said a, a racist statement against an Albanian player, um, and I don't know what he said, and I don't care. But interesting is the reaction, yeah, and the reaction of all his teammates and also the Austrian Football Federation is like, no racism. We never, never heard racism. No, here I did not ever hear a racist comment on the pitch. I mean, it's just like. It's just like it's just a lie. I mean, I don't, I can't imagine that those players really did not ever, ever um, witness um, discrimination, and it was always, it was always like white, white players or white officials who said this. So I mean, how can they say? Perhaps they just don't notice. Yeah. So I don't care what what Anatovic said, but like the reaction was like the same, like it was twenty years ago. It's like neglecting, if you say. And this is always our role as fair play. We go there and say, okay, come on, Austrian Football Association. There has been like all your supporters shouted homophobic chants. You have to do something. And the reaction is always the same. It's like, what, where? Well, we have to see. No, there was no homophobia. We did not hear it. And then if it's proof, then they say like, ah, I mean, ah, not. we're not responsible for this. This is like a problem of society. So like, I mean, we can't change this. We can't do anything. So it's yeah. like always this, these two kind of reactions and, and it was the same now. And, and, and this just shows that like they, they don't take the responsibility, not at all. So, I mean, even, of course, it's also like a bigger problem in society, but anyway, they as football is like one of the best funded sport disciplines could like take the responsibility and say, okay, we, we want to be role models. We want to make a change. We take it serious. We say, okay, we have a problem. Let's do something. That was a really nice uh, interview we have, Webber. Uh, that is, of course, our hardworking producer, Webber, who was uh, talking about uh, racism and how people are trying to tackle it in Europe. But uh, Ganda joke to marna padega. Now that you've seen Webber. Now you know why you don't see him too often on a show. <laughs> uh, no, but, but jokes aside, uh, 
uh, Supriya, the same issue persists in Italy as well. Uh, you know, historically we've seen Italy, there's an issue, especially you, you've seen monkey chants. Uh, players have got angry and they have left the field as well. Uh, have, have they sort of moved ahead from it or does it still persist in various corners around football stadiums? Uh, you're mute. Amateur move. Um, a year ago, uh, the Syria launched a campaign to fight racism and all of their posters featured monkeys, just to give you context of how yeah. tone deaf it is here. Uh, <laughs> I think similar to what what she mentioned, uh, there is racism denial. Uh, I think there's a couple of factors at play. Italy in the last 10 years has seen massive economic decline, unemployment, but at the same time, a huge migrant crisis. Uh, I think when Balotelli first joined Italy, it started conversations, but nothing has changed. Um, when Lukaku joined Inter Milan and went to Cagliari, which any black player who's been to play at Cagliari, who's, who plays for an Italian side, has heard monkey chants. His own fans, the Inter Ultras, actually defended it and said, hey, Lukaku, and I paraphrase here, welcome to Italy. This isn't racism. This is just what we do. We just like to make jokes. Um, that's insane. Hmm. Your own fans are telling you, get used to the monkey noises. Uh, when Balotelli almost walked off the pitch at the Verona game, the Verona uh, Ultra leader said, hey, listen, this is Italy. We make fun of the way people look. We make fun of all players. We make fun of the color of the skin. But it's not racism. There's so there's no recognition of what is racism here. Um, I think segregation has a lot to do with it. But if you're not aware, you're not going to be able to fight it. The numbers are shocking. I think that in five years, there are 250 cases of racism reported across five seasons in Syria. But if you talk to the average person, they'll say, no, Italians aren't racist, which by and large, they aren't. Uh, Ishfaq, if I can uh, bring you into the chat, sorry Supriya to interrupt, uh, uh, but more or less if you die, you can jump back in whenever you feel like it. Ishfaq, uh, so much of your travel has happened through football and, and, and you've been, I think, uh, all over the world now playing the game and, and with teams. Uh, what's your experience been like from that perspective, both with interacting with fans as well as those you may have met uh, just a, a, in real life on the streets and, and things like that? I think, you know, like it's a problem of and education from school. People have been brought up like that. If you, if you, we all know that when we talk about African players here, the first thing mm. oh. for India everybody is Nigerian. Chalo, Nigerian se play, Nigeria play ah. Ah. So uh, it's, it's, it's. Aapko it's shabd batao, kya bolte hai, sir? Hapshi. Hapshi bolte hai. Stadium mein. Ah, exactly. So, like, so so it's it's like first it starts with the disrespect only you know like oh they will be available cheap and they they you know like um you know like uh, it, it it's a big issue you know like uh, i have i know many times you know like how people call us hey, you indians <laughs> so so there is nothing in in middle east uh, you might it's not getting you know, usually they don't get it, it doesn't get reported, but but you know, like you feel like a second grade season when you are called like that, you know, like uh, I, um, many times. Uh, I because I'm from Kashmir, so I have faced that uh, on a different way. <laughs> and people from Northeast, I know they, they have been racially abused uh, every now and then, uh, but I think the problem, uh, starts from the academic education also like we are in schools you have to stress more on that and then academy you know football academies where you have to you know like stress a little bit more because it's very very important and uh, i think football teaches us equality which you know like is because of one of the greatest ever player <laughs> Who, who played the game was Pele. So, uh, so I, I think that is where we should, it, it should be, everybody should be judged on his talent. Uh, I was recently, I don't know, I think I, uh, whether I shared with you, Arjun, or not, it was a BBC report. You're now, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot was non ci sono negri italiani, which basically means there are no black Italians, which... Second generation, not so many. Now in the team, yes. So 
this this thing about being african but being at italian it's another race conversation that's pretty new in italy uh but any player who's played from boateng to el sharawi to balotelli the monkey noises the chants and then being told but, but actually guys you need a thicker skin hum racist nahi hai hum aise bandar ki awaaze bana rahe hain there's no defense of that but there's also no awareness within fan bases and society in italy at the moment that doing things like that is racist i think denial denial is the key here which everyone has mentioned nikola supriya ishwak everyone has said denial is the main thing here and just take arnautovic's case bhai you said ashwak has traveled the world courtesy of football here's another guy who's met around the world courtesy of football so in that sense it's na insaniyat hoti hai wo logon ko milke hoti hai ki aap idhar udhar jaate ho you you understand cultures you sit in societies and all despite doing that despite doing all of that he's gone and done that right so it's so ingrained in you ki wo aapke ghar se chal raha hai ki aapke family ke andar chal raha hai to wo you know wo ek bhadas nikal rahi hai so theek hai i think the best part is that you're having a conversation the conversation is the main thing that the fact that these players are taking a knee uh, and while people may be right in a sense saying ki yeah superficial hai isse kuch hone nahi wala par usse ye ho raha hai ki india mein baith ke 420 gram karke show hai aur hum log uske bare mein baat cheet kar rahe hain and there'll be 500 700 other shows will be talking about it and that is the whole impact of taking that knee but i guess we're really far away from it but but the great thing is you know you're at a starting point or i don't know where you are but you're having a conversation about it because if you're not having a conversation about it then then this topic is dead and you know you have no way to fix it so that is great um, anything else you guys want to add before we head to web ki baatein i wanted to just say something whoever you know like our new new generation coaches you just have to stop it you know from where people think it's all right to say you know like you have to correct them you know like especially in india for example oh uh, chalo do nigerian habshi player ko leke aate Mm. that is where you have to stop it you have to tell them it's not the right way maybe okay we can bring nigerian like liberian players which is fine but the the way you are saying it, it 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 has to be you have to give them respect you have to tell them okay let's bring two good nigerian players rather than saying go oh, let's let's bring do chalo do habshi player leke aate hain so so uh, so i think that is where people have to understand people have to get educated habshi the word derived from long back in arab it, it was a place called habsha like where that's what it's like a kashmiri player ko le le ke aao it's not associated with the black thing and all maybe those african people were there and uh, uh, they have to understand it it's the name of a place that doesn't mean ki wahan se is white color skin ka bhi player aadmi ho sakta hai so it's not associated with everyone they are saying so so proper knowledge has to be and uh, you know like uh, we have to stop them then and there jab even players be casually bolte <laughs> dressing room mein bhi kabhi kabhi players casually but we have to stop it there you know like chote se mazak se bhi it gives you insight by uh, the moment aap ek chota sa mazak karte ho people realize okay it's okay to yeah. just joke on this i think we have to jaise hum log bolte hain bachchon ko gaali deni galat baat hai we have to tell them it's equivalent to the gali only so it's like we have to stop it there theek hai sir main aapko waise ambedkar stadium which is like the hub <laughs> of taunts of racial taunts wahan pe maine ek bari suna tha habshi to bola tha uske pehle ye bhi bola tha national geographic ke habshi wahan pe khel rahe hain main ka bhai this is next level uh, kya bol and uske aas paas you know bacche the ki aapko you you played ambedkar bacche aate hain wahan pe khel dekhne ke liye match match dekhne ke liye so that's that and that's uh, a really bad one huh? i have a really bad one you know it's not that uh, i mean of course hum log bhi gali khate hain bhai siddhant aisa nahi ki hum log gali nahi khate udhar khate bhi hain aapas mein jab pitch pe hote hain to probably khilate bhi hain ek dusre ko but but wo kis aap kis type ki gali de rahe hain kis kin words ka istemal kar rahe hain wo sab kafi i think mayne rakhta hai isme and and one of the things i have seen at least in indian football is that Uh, for what is worth now different people can learn different things from different experiences for sure like you were saying about uh, what are not to be stated and and he also immediately came out and owned up to this and apologized for it so so let's hey, well, once no but uh, no, there's no. a full machinery behind him telling yeah, no, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. so uh, part of the conversation is that when when a player does something like this 
देन इमीडिएटली देर आर टेन हंड्रेड थाउजेंड पीपल टेलिंग एम कि भाई ये आपने गलत किया है इंक्लूडिंग हिज ओन कैप्टन इन दिस चीज डेविड एलबा हु फिजिकली टोल्ड हिम टू शट अप यू नो ऑन द पिच सो सो uh that it's super important what also ishwak said that in a country like india where players are coming from so many different uh, caste backgrounds religious backgrounds economic backgrounds uh ethnic backgrounds that in the dressing room you get this kind of melting pot scenario where people get to experience one another's cultures and if we learn from it and maybe get some uh, get understand one another and accept what, what each one some of our uh guests on the show who learned so much from from playing the game with people from all over the country